My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. A good indicator of a rich and healthy ecosystem is the presence of fossorial wildlife. This means that when you dig into the ground and look through the soil, you'd see fungus, isopods, millipedes, worms, and much more. In Florida, there are several snake species that live in this type of habitat, some of which look much like worms, and others are strikingly beautiful. And the first one I saw on my trip to Florida was quite unexpected. All right. Here we have a little red-bellied snake. Red-bellied snakes are pretty widespread throughout the eastern United States, but here in Florida, they're actually one of the rarer snakes. These guys are too, too small to eat anything that a typical snake would eat, and so these guys are actually eating really small, like little insects, insect larvae, and worms, and small slugs, and stuff like that. This is a, a typically a small species of snake, but um, they do get a little bit bigger than this. This is certainly a, a young one, but uh, they get upwards probably about, of about a foot long. Some people may mistake this for a ring neck because they have a little ring on their neck almost, but it's not nearly as distinct and they have a very different overall color. And they also have little keels, which uh, is actually just a little ridge on each scale that you can find that gives them this more rough texture as compared to a ring neck, which is much smoother. These are also actually more closely related to garter snakes and water snakes than they are ring necks and other colubrids. And they are non-venomous, completely harmless, and just a, an adorable little thing to find. So uh, really cool, we're gonna let the snake go. Another fossorial snake I saw on my trip to Florida was a ringneck snake. Surprisingly, this snake eluded me until the day I had to fly home, even despite that it's Florida's most common fossorial. So this is probably one of the most common snakes in Florida. This is the southern ringneck snake. It's a beautiful snake, as you can see. You'd think it wouldn't blend in that well in the forest, but these guys aren't on the surface that often. They live most of their lives underground and maybe come out like at dawn and dusk and then sometimes at nighttime every once in a while. But of course, they don't blend into anything with this beautiful bright belly. And they have that as a, de as a defense to make them seem like they are a toxic snake that should not be eaten. Kind of like poison frogs. Poison frogs are very brightly colored to warn any predator that tries to go after them that, hey, I am poisonous. However, this snake is actually not poisonous at all. So eating the snake would not really cause much harm to most predators. However, it is a mildly venomous snake, which is different than being poisonous because they inject venom into their prey instead of making something sick when something eats the snake. So this is a mildly venomous snake, completely harmless to humans, but probably a bit more dangerous to the stuff that it eats. They use that venom to kill their prey, which is mostly just anything that they can find that hangs around in the soil. These guys don't really need to get out and bask in the sun like a lot of other snakes because they're so small and fragile. And so they have a pretty easy time warming up as much as they need when just sitting under something that is already warm. So a defense that these guys have, uh, like I said, is that bright color. So when these guys feel threatened, they actually do something uh, that not a lot of snakes do and that is playing dead. They turn over and they just really try and show this coloration by kind of making these very tight coils, especially with their tail, they curl their tail as well um, into a pretty tight coil just to really emphasize that they have this bright belly and that they might be poisonous and that they should, that's not an animal worth eating. Out here, I'm hoping to find the, an Eastern coral snake. And this is one of the primary food items for Eastern coral snakes. Despite this snake being venomous, it is no match for a snake like a coral snake or a king snake. Both king snakes and coral snakes and probably small racers love to go after these snakes um, as a source of food. Hi, I see you, hello. You gonna try and climb in my hair? As you can see, they have decent eyesight because he was able to see that there was something to try and climb into and burrow into, and that being my hair. So these snakes, after they get used to you, like a lot of other species, can be pretty friendly. Obviously, this is a smaller snake, but for a ringneck, it's actually pretty decent size. All right, let's get you out of my hair. He's on my ear now. So ringnecks are pretty much a very common North American snake in general. These guys you find almost all over the North American continent. However, uh, there are some parts of the world where they're pretty rare, like where I live. I live in Utah, and ringneck snakes in Utah are very rare, but they're really cool. You want to try and climb my face again? I don't think that's going to happen. There's all sorts of different subspecies of ringneck snake that you find around their range. Um, the ones around here in Florida are called the southern ringneck snake. It's about time I'd made an episode on these snakes because they're so common, and almost every time I come down to the southeast, I find one. Do they make good pets? And the answer is no. I think people have tried to keep these as pets before, but it's really not a good idea. From what it sounds like, they're probably difficult pets to keep like if you find some that are captive bred and you know exactly what you're doing when it comes to feeding a snake that lives most of its life underground and stays to a small size then I guess you could try but uh, overall if you see one of these in the wild I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to keep it 
thank you so much for watching and taking the time to educate yourself on the southern ringneck snake. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. Seeing a red-bellied snake and a ringneck snake only covers a sliver of all the fossorial snake species native to Florida, so no doubt I'll be back to look for more. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.